once you have a good enough uh, interface between your brain and a sophistic, uh, sophisticated enough machine where you can offload some of your cognition, mm -hmm. one thing that might happen is if that energetic pattern matches your brain's energetic pattern, your consciousness might reside partially in the machine. Again, this is wildly wild speculation. I personally don't think that this is what will happen, but this is a test that I would do is if that happens, if your consciousness can metastasize into a machine, then that proves that consciousness could reside in a machine, mm -hmm. which would underpin the idea that maybe machines can themselves be conscious as long as they have the right energetic pattern. Again, I don't believe that that's the direction that's going to go, but that's a test that I would do. But do you think the substrate is actually important? So our, we're bags of meat. Do you think we're any more capable of consciousness than, say, silicon or whatever else we place uh, these systems on? Um, that's a really hard question. From a, from a physically observable standpoint, the substrate is absolutely critical, at least from, uh, like, you, you, you need to have the right kind of substrate in order to uh, support consciousness, right? But uh, so this is this is where I can occupy several schools of thought, and I haven't decided which one I think is true. And it's it's entirely possible that none of our schools of thought are the truth. Um, but so the materialist school of thought says that physical matter and energy is is the is the fundamental substrate of the universe. If that's true, then consciousness seems to emerge from those energetic patterns that I mentioned. Your brain is only about three pounds. It's mostly made of cholesterol and fat, um, and it you're, then consciousness emerges from the right firing patterns of neurotransmitters. If that's the case, that's so that's what I mean when I said like energetic patterns. If that's the case, then it's entirely possible that you could also get consciousness from the correct or, uh, organization of information in a machine. Now that just feels wrong <laughs> because for humans, our subjective experience is so unique and so personal that the idea that a machine could have that is like just it's so alien it's so foreign but one thing that i do want to point out is that our subjective experience uh is partly shaped by evolution meaning that we're guided by things like pain hunger loneliness these are not necessarily intrinsically built into machines so even if they are conscious their subjective experience is still going to be very very different from ours it would be as different it could be as different um from like you know, being human to being a tree, right? The subjective experience of a tree, if it does have any kind of consciousness, is going to be fundamentally different from ours because it doesn't have nerve endings. It doesn't have hunger. It just, it, like, it waits, right? And it it processes and metabolizes and changes its, its chemistry to survive changing conditions, fight bugs, and that sort of thing. And so if you think about, okay, you take the model of, you know, humans with eyes, ears, nose, mouth, so on, and compare that to the living experience of a tree, the living ex or the, the subjective experience of an AI could be that different again, or even more different. So, you know, then there's a few other schools of thoughts like panpsychism, which says that uh, consciousness is a uh, fundamental aspect of all matter, which it's just once matter is organized enough, it intrinsically becomes conscious. I don't know that that's actually uh, true, especially when you look at the fact that your brain doesn't physically change when you go to sleep, it's just the pattern changes, the energy pattern changes, uh, ditto for uh, anesthesia. And in fact, neuroscientists can identify very specific regions of the brain that if you like poke an electrode into it, you go unconscious immediately. Um, so there's a good amount of evidence that the materialist interpretation is the correct interpretation, at least from a empirically observable standpoint.